So let's talk about working with user accounts. Now, first thing we got to be aware of is that our account doesn't have administrative rights. Well, sort of, it does. What happens is in every Linux system, there is a user named root. And this user is like the administrative user in Windows that has all power. Well, in Ubuntu, that user is actually disabled by default. Um, so you can't log in as root. Instead, what happens is it creates your first user has the ability to act like root. And we use that by typing the command sudo, which is basically switch user and do. So switch user and do a command. And then we can put in whatever command we want, and we'll have to enter our password, but it will allow us to execute that command as root. So to add a user, the command is user add. And if I just type user add and don't do anything else, it'll show me all of my options. So I'm going to create a new user, and I have to be at root to do it. So I'm going to do sudo user add, and I'm going to create a user, do slash d forward slash home forward slash s smith dash m s smith so the way this works in linux is you do the command and then all the options and then the object that you're working with so this says uh switch user to root and do a user add command set their home directory to forward slash home forward slash s smith all user accounts have a home directory, normally within the home directory. It makes life nice and easy. Dash M says, go ahead and create that if it doesn't already exist. Oh, and by the way, name the user S. Smith. So that's what creates the account. We hit enter, and it does so. Now, normally it would ask you to enter your password, except that I did that just a couple of minutes ago when I was playing on the system. And so it remembered my password, so it went ahead and let me do it. But if you haven't done it in about 15 minutes, you're going to have to type in your password in order to do, do that. So that gives me my um, account. But it didn't ask me to set a password for the account. To do that, it's sudo, and the command is passwd, or set the password, and I want to set the password for S. Smith. And then it asks me for my password, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And there we go, password successfully updated. All right, now there's a couple of things I can do to make sure this works. Let me start by clearing this. I want to see if the account exists. So for that, I'm going to cat forward slash etc forward slash passwd. Now in the etc folder is where we keep a whole bunch of operating system specific stuff, and the password file specifically lists all of our user accounts. And right here at the bottom line, you're going to see S. Smith right here. S. Smith is our user account. And you see a bunch of fields here separated by colons. So the second one is the user's password. And that X there doesn't mean that the user doesn't have a password. It means that that password is stored somewhere else. And that's actually really important because this file does not require administrative access to get to or root access to get to. But the actual password file, etc shadow, does. And then the next one is going to be the user ID. Remember, we track things by user names. But Linux, just like Windows, uses the uh, SID, the security identifier. Okay, This is the user ID, which is very, very similar. Um, <clears throat> and so it's how Unix is going to track, or Linux is going to track that particular uh, user account. And then we've got a, that 1001 uh, repeated. Now this won't always be repeated twice, but this is a group identifier. So when you create a user, it creates a group for that user as well. Now you'll see on the S. Smith when we've got double colons, that means I don't have anything in that field. But if you go up one account to my account up above that, you'll see that we have colon David. And that's just some generic information. And then colon the home um, the home folder and then colon the uh, shell that they're using, their default shell. If I want to see that the folder was created, I can do ls, which is the directory listing, for the forward slash home directory, and there I'll see David and S. Smith. All right, so let me go ahead and add another user. So I just did user add 
to add a user, there's another way to do it, and that is the add user command. So that's sudo add user, and this time I'm going to add the user T Jones. Now notice I didn't put all of the other options on here. I don't really need to because add user is actually a shell script that's going to prompt me for all of it. So I'm going to put in the Unix password, abc dollar sign. And you'll notice, by the way, adding user T Jones, adding new group T Jones, adding new user to group T Jones, creating a home directory for home T Jones, copying files from the etc skel. That's a skeleton file. It's basically a default profile. So anything you want to show up for all users in their home folder, you put it in the etc skel folder. And then as soon as you create a user, it'll add that to their home folder. So set my password. I'm going to do. Tom Jones, room number, work number, home phone number, any other information. Is this correct? Yes. And that creates my account for me. In fact, let me do clear and then we'll verify that. Cat, etc password. And there's T Jones. And you see all of the information that we just created for him ls forward slash home and there's t jones's home directory all right now i'm having to type sudo every time i do these i can there's a shortcut that will let me in as root temporarily without having to log in and that's sudo su which is switch user and then just dash and that will make me the root user so now i don't have to type sudo anymore and you'll see my prompt right here changed from David at Ubuntu to root at Ubuntu. All right. So let me add a couple of more users. Add user D. Wilson. Set the password. And then just enter because that's capitalized, so that's the default option. Let's add user J Ross. And then full name John Ross. And I'm going to skip the rest. Okay, so now if I do ls forward slash home, I should see all of them there. Let me clear this before I cat the file. Cat etc password. And that should display all of my accounts for me. S. Smith, T. Jones, D. Wilson, J. Watt Ross. Okay, perfect. Now, let me show you one other thing. This is just kind of an off the wall thing. <clears throat> cat is technically concatenate. It will put different string values together. But we can also use it to display files the way we have been. And it'll display the contents of those files. And as long as those are straight text files, it works fine. There is another one that's kind of the reverse of cat, literally. And clear. And it's tac. Forward slash etc forward slash password or PASSWD. Now it does the same thing as cat does, it just does it backwards. So this one shows me cat showed me the file from the first line to the last line. This shows me from the last line down to the first line. So if I'm looking for something in a long text file <clears throat> and I want to reverse the order of it, I can use TAC instead of cat. I keep trying to type DOS CLS commands. Okay, one more thing. So the etc password file contains a list of users. There's another file, etc shadow. Now this one does require administrative access to look at. You've got to be root before you can look at it, or you've got to have the permission to use sudo and do it. So not everybody can do it. Everybody can do the password file. This is where those passwords are actually stored, or at least the hash of those passwords are stored. So right here you see, for each user account, you see a hash of their password. And then at the end of that is, um, it, your textbook's going to talk about it, it's uh, basically your password options. We'll look at those a little bit later. We're not going to look at them here. But this is where the password hashes are actually stored. And remember, you have to be root before you can look at it. All right, so how do I delete a user? Well, we did user add to create a user. 
will the user Dell to delete a user. But before I type in the whole command to delete a user, let's look at our options here. Anytime you type a command, and almost anytime you type a command and hit enter, if it's not correct, it'll give you the information about it. The other thing you can do, and this is pretty much standard, is you can do the username dash H, and that will display the help information. So user Dell dash H is going to show me those options as well. And you'll see the user usage, the name, and then the options, and the login name that we're doing this to. So I wanted to delete J Ross, so it's going to be user Dell. Now, if I if I just do J Ross, it'll go ahead and delete the account, but it will leave the home folder for me. And frequently, that's what you want, because frequently you're going to want to get into that home folder because they may have some files there that you need. But if you want to get rid of them, it's dash R J Ross. And that will delete the username or the user, the home folder, and, and you see this right here, the mail spooler. Now, because we haven't set up mail spooling, obviously that didn't go very far, but that's okay. It went ahead and removed it and removed the user. So I can do cat etc pisswd, and you'll see that J Ross is now gone. You'll also, we can also do an ls uh, slash home, and you'll see the J Ross folder is gone. You can remove that JROS folder manually, but there's a few things you're going to have to do. If you want to get rid of it nice, fast, and easy, then it's easy to do that as part of the user Dell. If not, there's some extra steps you have to take and remove the full files out of it and make sure you get them all and make sure there's not any hidden files in it and a bunch of stuff like that that you've got to deal with. Okay, so that is basics of adding and removing users in Linux.